Hi there, I'm your host, Mr. Doyle, and this is A Great Undertaking. In this series, I am covering Stephen King's novel, The Stand, as well as the two TV adaptations of the novel, the illustrated poem entitled The Dark Man, and in this video, I'll be taking a look at the comic book series, which may be my favorite of the three adaptations of The Stand. Full disclosure, I am not an avid comic book reader, though I still have a small collection from my teenage years. Additionally, I have virtually no skill when it comes to the visual arts. I am incapable of drawing anything that could be objectively considered good. However, I feel that my shortcomings as an artist have only served to strengthen my respect and appreciation for those who are masters of the medium, and the folks that crafted this graphic interpretation of the stand are undoubtedly just that. Masters. History and Background. The Stand comic book series began publication in 2008 and ran through 2012. The series was broken up into six parts, each of which included five books, totaling 30 individual comic books. The books have since been collected into a series of six graphic novels, as well as a hardcover omnibus, which also included a companion book that is effectively a book of extras and commentary. The series was written by Roberto Aguirre Sacasa, who co-wrote the screenplay for the 2013 Carrie movie remake with fellow screenwriter and bane of my existence, Larry Cohen. Aguirre Sacasa has worked on numerous comic book series, including, but not limited to, Marvel Knights, Nightcrawler, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and Archie Meets Glee. What's with Archie regularly finding its way into modern pop culture? Riverdale, Glee, uh, apparently Sabrina the Teenage Witch was an Archie thing too? I did not know that. Apparently I grossly underestimated the cultural relevance of Archie. Anyway, Aguirre Sacasa has also written for numerous plays and TV shows, a lot of which were god-awful, and are also tied into the Archieverse, including the aforementioned Riverdale TV show, Gross, Glee, Ew, and Chilling's Adventures of Sabrina. Meh. While a great deal of Sakasa's body of work does not appeal to me personally, his career is impressive and his lengthy resume speaks for itself. The books were illustrated by Mike Perkins, a renowned artist in his field whose resume includes Marvel classics such as Captain America and X-Men, <clears throat> as well as some unlikely DC Dark Horse matchups like Superman vs. The Terminator and Green Lantern vs. Aliens. Cool. Perkins discussed a number of his techniques in the companion book for The Stand, some of which were entirely unconventional, at least to someone like myself who is ignorant to the world of illustration. He mentions using paper towels and even an old sock while shading to obtain unique textures as well as a variety of specialty pencils to achieve different tones and shades. His work in the stand is striking and often more grotesque than anything I imagined while reading the novel. Dude is gifted and some of the images from these books are forever burned into my mind. I'm not exaggerating, they are that impactful. Laura Martin was brought on board as the colorist, whose work is the final piece of the puzzle that brings Perkins' illustrations to life and, well, in some cases, to death. Damn, I'm clever. Martin has worked for Image Comics, Cross-Gen Comics, and most notably, her work can be seen in the Marvel Civil War series. Yes, that Civil War. Martin's work complements Perkins' illustration style to great effect, and her use of color ranges from the vividly explosive to the dramatically subdued, depending on the setting and desired mood. She takes a sizable share of the responsibility for the effect effectiveness of the images that grace the pages of the stick. Finally, the series editor was the one and only Ralph Macchio. Okay, well, not not the one and only Ralph Macchio. Is this a a different not not that Ralph Macchio? The other and not only Ralph Macchio. This guy, whose resume includes some of the biggest names in comic book history, like Daredevil, Thor, Captain America, and Spider-Man. 
is it by the book? The comic series is based on the 1990 complete and uncut publication of The Stand, and it's honestly astounding that they managed to include practically every scene in detail in the comic books. This is by far the most loyal adaptation of the story, and King himself was so impressed that he made sure to let the team know how thrilled he was with their work. In an interview with Publishers Weekly Comics in 2008, Aguirre Sacasa stated, quote, I got this email from an address I didn't recognize, and it was Stephen telling me how much he was enjoying what we were sending him and how proud he was of our work. Needless to say, that email is now framed and hanging over my desk, even as these words are being read." Unquote. <clears throat> That's some high praise considering King has often been dissatisfied, and very vocally so, with adaptations of his work. Aguirre Sacasa didn't so much write the comic adaptation, but rather he took King's novel and crafted it to fit the comic book format. This is in no way meant to be a negative criticism, however. Sakasa had the good taste to guide the story in a way that worked within the medium without altering or editing the story to death. What few cuts he made were barely noticeable, and while the comic has a tendency to bounce back and forth between characters and settings at a rapid-fire rate, he manages to keep the story moving in a way that feels loyal to the source material without following the novel to the letter. But it's not only the story itself that is by the book. Illustrator Mike Perkins was deeply dedicated to accurately capturing the real settings from the different parts of the stand. For example, while in Manhattan for Comic-Con, he followed the exact route that Larry Underwood takes during his journey to escape the city, and he snapped hundreds of photos to ensure his representation was not only accurate, but was in fact precise. From Central Park to Fifth Avenue, onto 39th Street, and finally the Lincoln Tunnel, Perkins took numerous shots that allowed him to replicate the architecture, crosswalks, and even such small details as street signs and the exact number of windows in each building. Perkins went so far as to provide side-by-side -side comparisons of the photos he took while in Manhattan with his illustrations, and the resemblance is striking. Additionally, the character portrayals were spot on. Stu Redman is an almost nondescript, seemingly unremarkable man. Larry Underwood looks suspiciously like a young Bruce Springsteen, a rock star if ever there was one. Mother Abigail looks exactly like the Mother Abigail of the 1994 TV series because you can't improve on perfection. And Randall Flagg is the dark, intimidating beast of a man that neither of the TV adaptations really succeeded in portraying. In the same interview with Publishers Weekly, Perkins remarked that King, quote, went so far as to let me know that my visualization of the character of Franny was exactly how he saw her when he originally started the novel, unquote. Final thoughts. The truth is, this series of comics is hands down the superior adaptation of The Stand. The pace of the story is nail-bitingly intense, the artwork is astounding, not to mention an impressively accurate portrayal of King's original vision, and the overall loyalty to the story of the novel is as close to by the book as it gets. It's a series that manages to reach beyond the capabilities of my own imagination and show me a representation of a classic story that keeps my attention, regardless of the fact that it's a story I've read or watched on screen countless times. You should absolutely pick these books up. The consolidated graphic novels are easy to come by, but if anyone knows where I can get the omnibus for less than $500, let me know. Alright, that's all for this video. In the next video in this series for The Stand, I'll be taking a look at an illustrated poem entitled The Dark Man, which is essentially the origin story of Randall Flagg. New videos drop on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and so far I've done a series for Carrie, Salem's Lot, The Shining, and Night Shift, so if you're enjoying the King content, go check out those playlists and watch them in order for the full effect. Okay. Goodbye. Be sure to click like and subscribe to the channel for my continued analysis of all things Stephen King, pretty pleased with blood and guts on top. 
My name is Mr. Doyle, and this has been a great undertaking.